All right, gentlemen, so we, and ladies, <laughs> uh, so we are gonna be working on Project SV2 here today. Um, we are gonna be working on GSXR rear wheel setup. Um, I get a lot of questions about this. Uh, I had gotten a lot of questions about this on my other bike. Um, I didn't do a very thorough kind of walkthrough um, or you know, it wasn't detailed about what you need to do. Um, so what I am gonna do is uh, film uh, the pertinent parts of doing this GSXR rear wheel swap. Um, I will put some more information down in the doobly-doo below. Um, I think the, um, the video description limits the amount of information I can put in there too much to do it there. So I will put a comment down there, look for my comment down there, and I'll put um, the long list of um, information that you need to be able to do this GSXR rear wheel swap on a Gen 2 uh, SV650. Um, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot of information to kind of parse through. It took me a long time to figure out what I needed, collect parts. Um, I'll, uh, I'll kind of walk you through it as we go. Um, and then, like I said, there'll be a lot of information down in the bottom as well. And, uh, let's get started. All right. So the very first thing you need to do, um, is work on getting this rear wheel off. Um, so obviously you're going to need a, uh, rear wheel stand or some way to get the back of the bike up off the ground, off of the wheel. Um, you're going to loosen, uh, your nut there. Take the axle out, you know, loosen the chain, do, do everything you would do to uh, to get this rear wheel off of there. Um, I can't remember what size this is, but I'll tell you guys in just a second when we get it going. Um, yeah, so let's get the rear wheel off here. All right, so we've got the back wheel off here, as you can see. Um, this side is a 24 millimeter socket. So you back that off, um, you loosen up the chain adjuster so you can push the wheel up, jump the chain off. Uh, axle should slide right out. Be careful when you pull it out. Um, this is the chain side, so this flipped around backwards, but there's a spacer right here that's probably gonna fall out. And there's a spacer over on this side that's gonna fall out right here. So be careful of those. Um, you've also got your brake uh, caliper bracket here. Um, as you can see, it's got that little groove there uh, to keep it locked into the swing arm. Um, so that when you hit the brakes, it doesn't just spin around, but you're gonna remove that from, uh, you're gonna remove your brake caliper from your brake caliper bracket. Um, when you go to put the GSXR rear wheel on this, and I'll put it down in the link below, and I'll look it up so I can say it on this video as well, um, uh, what years uh, the GSXR you need. Um, this needs to be sent off with the sprocket carrier from the GSXR wheel. You gotta send them off to uh, TWF um, to uh, be machined it has to take a little bit of a uh, little bit of clearance off of those for the wheel to fit in here um, so i'll um, talk about that in a minute uh, in the meantime we're going to drop this bad boy back down um, i need to use this rear wheel uh, this rear uh, wheel stand on the other one uh, to hold the other one up so i'm gonna put the axle in there and i'll put it on jack stands um, just so it's kind of floating here um, I do have the front on a front stand, so that should help keep it stable. Um, I'm not too worried about it tipping over. It's here in the garage. It's protected from wind, weather, um, everything that's going on. So uh, let's get on over to the other bike and take all the GSXR stuff off. I'm not going to film that. I'll just show it to you when I get back over here um, so we can take a peek and talk about what we got to do to get it on here. So I'll be back in uh, just a little bit. For those of you playing along at home, uh, the two jack stands was too wide for the wheels for my stand to slide out from under it. So I just did the one. Um, it's a little less stable than I would like, but it doesn't appear like it's gonna be going anywhere. That front stand seems to be holding it pretty good. It's not gonna be like this very long. So uh, I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. It's probably only gonna be an hour or so for me to run over to the other one and, and make it back over here. But uh, hopefully that doesn't bend my axle either. I don't think it will, that axle will is thick enough it should be able to support the weight of this bike no more than than it weighs um but just for uh just for reference for anybody doing this at home here all right so we have got the gsxr rear wheel off my other one um brought over here um got back up on the rear stand here as soon as i got back um so you can use a 2006 to 2009 GSXR 600 or 750 rear wheel. Um, word on the street is that the 2008 and 9 rear wheel is lighter, but it's the same section and build. It's uh, I I can't remember what makes it lighter, but apparently it was it was quite a bit lighter. Um, the 
Uh, brake disc is uh, the same on both bikes, so you can use either one. Um, mine came with the disc, so I was happy for that. You will also need uh, a sprocket carrier and a sprocket. Um, now what you'll do, as I said just a few minutes ago, uh, you will take your sprocket carrier uh, and your brake caliper bracket. You take those and you ship them off. Um, I'll put the link down below so you can uh, figure out where to send them if you want to do this. Uh, but you send those off and he machines them down. Um, you have to shave some off of this front face here that faces the swing arm um, to gap it this way a little bit for the wheel. Uh, and then he also shaves off the inside of uh, the sprocket carrier there um, again so it sits a little bit farther in there. Um, actually, I think it's on the front face. I don't know. I, I can't remember exactly. At any rate, he, he machines it down for you to the proper tolerances, and then he sends it back to you with the proper wheel spacers. You're going to get three of them. You're going to get one for right here on the sprocket carrier. Uh, there's another one inside of here. I'm not going to pull that off, um, but there's another one inside of there that goes into the wheel, um, sits inside of the wheel bearing, and then there's another one on the other side uh, that sits inside of the wheel bearing. Um, this one he pressed in there for me um, already. Um, it's in there pretty good. I'm not, uh, I wasn't, wasn't worried about it going anywhere. Um, but the other two were just free and they came back shipped um, with the sprocket carrier and the brake caliper machined. Um, and it sits in here and it goes, it, it works just great. I put um, a little over a thousand miles on this setup on my other bike. Um, so it works, works perfect. Um, the sprocket is, oh, I forget. I'll put it, I'll put it down below. I, uh, I kept notes as I went, but this has been over a year ago that I did this. So um, I'll put notes down in the low to talk about uh, like a parts list and everything. Um, the sprocket was uh, a GSXR sprocket. Um, I kept the 525 chain, so I didn't have to change my front sprocket. Um, there's something about the way that this is dished. Um, you have to flip it over so that it you know makes it sit in board just a little bit farther to make your chain line a little, little straighter. Um, so yeah, let's uh, see if we can get this bad boy on here. Um, hopefully this chain is going to work for me. I think this sprocket is a little bit bigger than the other sprocket um, that was on the other wheel. So I may end up having to get a new chain, um, which is okay. This one was kind of a super cheap one that came with the bike anyway. It wasn't on it and it was pretty rusty. Um, I was able to clean it up. It looked good. Um, I don't feel any tight spots in it, but um, if I need to get a new uh, chain, I can definitely do that. Um, that's just a few minutes to, to install, so I'm not too worried about that. But uh, yeah, let me set you guys up here uh, on a tripod and we'll get going. So first things first, um, we're going to have to install uh, our caliper back on our machine caliper bracket. Um, there is a little uh, bracket tab thing here that holds your brake pads in place. Make sure you don't lose it when you take this off. Make sure it is there when you put it back on. Um, your brakes won't work properly if that's not on there. It's a good idea to hit that with a little bit of grease as well. Um, there's also this little rubber guy here uh, that the bolt slides into that um, sometimes pops out of there. It's in there pretty good, but if you mess with it, it'll come out. So just make sure that's in there as well. That just helps keep nasty junk from getting in there. Uh, I gotta keep the schmoo uh, where the schmoo is supposed to be and keep other schmoo from getting where it's not supposed to be. Uh, so let's get this installed. Um, you're gonna have two bolts here that hold this on. Uh, this one is a 12 uh, and this one's a 14. Uh, so let's, uh, let's zap these on here real quick. Uh, so both of these bolts here are captured-ish. Um, this one's got a rubber boot around it and that just kind of holds it in place. Um, that's so this caliper can slide as the brakes uh, kind of work. Um, this one here actually screws into the caliper itself and then the pin uh, there on the other end of it goes into um, the bracket and that just helps kind of align everything and let the bracket slide on the caliper. Um, do be careful when you're putting this back in here. Um, when I was putting everything back together on my other bike from taking it off, uh, I actually cross-threaded this here, so now I gotta get a new caliper for that bike, um, which is fine. I should be able to pick one up pretty cheap. I'm gonna uh, give a shout to uh, uh, Matt 8 v um, I'll uh, put a link down to him below as well. Um, he parts out SV650s, uh, and he uh, has been a super awesome dude for uh, all of my interactions with him, so I uh, highly recommend him if you need anything uh, SV-related. Uh, he's probably got it. He doesn't always put everything up on his website, uh, he told me. Um, he's just you know, gets busy and it's difficult to keep keep up with everything all the time. So if you don't see anything on his website, just shoot him a message or an email. Um, he's on Reddit, he's on uh, Instagram. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll link to all his all his shits down in, in the, the, the doobly-doo down below. Um, so just be careful when you're putting these on. Um, it's helpful to put a little bit of grease on here as well since these do slide. It just helps uh, you know, make sure everything is, is sliding where it needs to be. Some people will tell you not to do that because the brake dust will stick to it and it'll um, cause oxidation issues. Um, I've always done that when I've done brakes in the past on cars, bikes, uh, never had any issues with it. 
So, um, you know, your mileage may vary. All right, so this is kind of tedious to do because you got to hold these brake pads up here. Make the bracket, make sure your bracket is in place. Make sure those brake pads go in where they're supposed to, right there. Line everything up. And start screwing. Which is everybody's favorite part. If you can get it lined up. Uh, make sure you start to hand thread these first. Um, and make sure that they aren't cross-threaded. Like I said, I'm a jackass and didn't do that, so I cost myself some money and time. All right, so that one, oh, well. If everything is lined up appropriately, it should be pretty easy to get these things going. Now is a good time. Uh, anytime you have to work on brakes, always a good time to practice your curse words, because nothing works until you cuss at it, ever. Uh, just from my personal experience in life. All right, so that one's going in real easy. Let's zap him in. People will tell you not to do this as well. So, you know, do as I say, not as I do. I don't know, I haven't had any problem using power tools on this once it started. Let's give it a little zap. <clears throat> this one is lined up now. Sometimes it'll get caught on that rubber. These rubbers are nothing but trouble. figure out why that's not wanting to work. Oh, well, shit, see? And then you drop your clip. See, this is just, this is just tedious. Um, another, this is also a good time to suggest that if you have the funds, just pay somebody to do this. Um, good opportunity to look at changing your brake pads, though. Um, so if you need to change brake pads in a SV650, you undo this bolt here and then this just pivots up you got a flathead screw there pull that pin out and then these will drop right out put the new ones in pivot back down you can do it without taking it off the bike uh, which is super convenient um, it's a really good opportunity to bleed your brakes and change your brake fluid while you're doing brake work um, i'm not sure what the interval is for that um, check out your your manual and or internet resources um, all right, now we're going in. I think that little rubber had gotten in the way. So, this is zap. Again, <clears throat> there's a torque spec for this. I don't know it offhand. I'm just gonna give it a couple of ugga duggas. Then I'll look it up and make sure that it's two spec later. Because uh, I'm a little short on time after work tonight. All right. Caliper is installed. Next step, let's pull this axle back out. Be careful to not do that specifically. All right, so I am gonna leave this axle hanging out like so. Actually, let me get a brush. grubby in here is a really good opportunity to clean up your workspace as well. Uh, this bike lived outside at my old apartment under a cover where the lawn guys would come through with their leaf blowers and blow everything on, excuse me, blow everything on the property to the back corner where I lived and my bikes lived and that included a shitload of sand all the time. So every crevice of this bike has had loads and loads of sand 
in, in, on, and around it. And no matter how many times I wash it, it likely will not ever be totally clean. But uh, it's okay. I'll just try and keep it from getting in the important bits and the moving bits because I don't want to grind everything down. All right, so axle's kind of hanging in there. Let me grab the wheel. Um, we'll see if we can get a good angle where you guys can see what's going on. Uh, and uh, slide this puppy in here. Um, well, we'll talk through it as we go. Okay. Right. So, what you're gonna do is have your caliper and bracket ready, kind of hanging off by the side over here. If you stick it on there, this wheel will not clear that uh, caliper. So you gotta slide the wheel in there and then kind of line up the caliper bracket first. Um, so like I said, you want to make sure your, uh, spaces are all in here. You've got the spacer here. This one should be in place already. Um, the other spacer he gives you, um, it'll be labeled on the kit, um, as well. It's, it's, it's really, really good instructions on how to put this together once you get, uh, once you get the machine parts back from him. Um, so there's a spacer inside the, uh, wheel and then there's this one, uh, and then there's, uh, one on the other side. Make sure those are all in place. They're really easy to put in. Um, if you're trying to do this yourself, you should be mechanically inclined enough to be able to figure out how they go. Um, like I said, they're labeled. Um, they only go in one way. These are to um, bring the axle size down to the SV axle size. The GSXR uses a bigger axle. Um, so this just brings them down to uh, uh, make sure that you can have everything concentric uh, and fit on your SV axle. Um, one another thing of note, I don't know if you can, you saw it before I put this on here, but there's a piece of wood under here. Um, this thing's kind of a pain in the butt to line up and squeeze in here. And you've got a bunch of parts that you got to kind of align just perfectly. So the axle will slide through. Uh, I found it really helpful to take a piece of wood, just a long skinny piece of wood and tuck under here. And that kind of gives you something to use as a lever to kind of wedge it up, um, uh, into the correct, uh, positioning. So let's see if I can get this wheel in here and this axle in here without cussing too much or dropping anything or breaking anything. I don't have a whole lot of hope for, for that first part. <laughs> this, this tends to be a swear heavy process. Oh, like I said, nothing, nothing works till you cuss at it. Um, so firstly, it appears that I need to spread my caliper open. Um, I did not uh, hit the brake pedal while I was doing this, but um, Sometimes these uh, these brake pads, uh, I think these brake pads are a little bit less worn than the ones on my other, one, on my other bike. So the, uh, I don't know, I don't know. At any rate, let me spread these open. I'll grab a screwdriver, hang on. They do make a special tool for this, for spreading these calipers open. I'm pushing the, the piston back inside of the cylinder there, the caliper. I have it, but it's over in my toolbox and I'm lazy and this will work. People will tell you not to do this as well because it can damage the brake pads. So again, do as I say, not as I do. So don't, don't do this this way. Okay, um, <laughs> that's gonna make me cuss at it. All right, let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can get the caliper bracket in here where it needs to go. No, oh, because the brake pads don't want to go. Let me take my watch off before I crush it. <clears throat> Come on, caliper. Cooperate with me here. Not asking for much. So, it's a good thing I'm not monetized. Don't worry about keeping sponsors happy or keeping. Oh, there we go. Okay. Nope. Oh, that certainly wasn't it here. Uh, nope. Nope. Hang on. What the fuck is going on? Also, just as a general rule of thumb, today is not a good example of it because I have to work tonight, so I'm kind of in a hurry. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, allow twice as much time as you think you're going to need 
for doing anything. This is sticky on there. Is that... Hmm, well, I'm gonna hit that with a file so it's a little bit smaller because it appears to be sticky on here and that was part of my issue. That should slide a lot more freely than that. And it's super tight. These should all be interchangeable parts. This is a second gen SV650. All the parts should line up. Apparently they don't. Hold please. Okay, I just uh, hit that with a file just, I don't know, for about seven seconds. I don't know that I really did anything. This feels just very slightly more free on there. Uh, so I took like half a blonde one off of there. Let's see if we can get this, this bitch lined up here without teaching anybody any new words. Part of my problem is that those uh, brake discs, or brake pads rather, um, are not opening up easily for the disc. <clears throat> like I said, it just helps to cuss at it. cussing at it for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna shut you guys off because I need to get the camera out of the way so I can kind of have a little more swing here without bumping into shit um, and stop busting my shins on stuff. Um, I'm gonna come back to come back to you guys in just a minute uh, so you can see what I got going on here. Hold that thought. Okay, so we uh, we cussed and we wiggled and we jiggled and we hit and we are on there. Um, helps to have a mallet ready to help kind of drive in that axle. Once you get everything lined up, it's a little sticky. We are in. So let's see if we can get everything lined up. Make sure our brake disc isn't dragging on anything. We'll see about that chain situation. And we get everything torqued down. Uh, I will, I don't know it offhand, but I will look it up and put down in the description below the torque spec for all these things. Um, caliper, bracket, bolts, uh, as well as your axle bolt. Um, put the torque specs down below. So uh, sit tight for just a second. We're gonna get this all hopefully cinched back together. And I might, even if I can get everything where it needs to be, might take it around the block. Let's see what we can get going here. Okay, so. Okay, so the caliper was dragging um, when I put it on there. It wasn't working real well. Uh, so I loosened up the caliper mounting bolt um, here and there. Uh, and that seemed to free it up a bit. So what I did was I stepped down on the brake pedal. So it would push down on that and kind of line everything. And then I, with the brake pedal held down, uh, I, I tightened down the bolts. That seems to have gotten it. It's still a little tight. Um, so we're going to investigate that further if need be, because I don't want, you don't want your, uh, brake pads to be rubbing. They'll heat up, it will heat up your brake fluid, which will make it expand, which will make it squeeze harder. And eventually it will just straight up seize, uh, which is obviously no bueno. So, uh, right now we're going to call that good. I'm going to get my axle nut on here and I'm going to try and roll it around the garage a little bit and see how tight that is. Um, and then we'll, uh. Keep on, keep on trucking. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. On the home stretch, guys. On the home stretch, you're riding this bad boy. All right, so we got the chain on here. Seems like it's gonna work just great. It's got uh, had a good amount of slack. Um, so I think this one's gonna work just fine for now. Um, I am gonna get 
a better chain, a higher quality chain at a later date. Um, but let's work on tightening uh, this chain. Um, Ari Henning will uh, speak at great length about chain maintenance. Um, I try to be part of the hashtag clean chain gang, um, but truthfully, I don't clean and maintain and oil my chain as often as I should. Um, again, your owner's manual will tell you the frequency with which you're supposed to do that, as will almost everyone on the internet. It's like uh, oil preferences and tire preferences. Everybody's, oh, that's too much. Oh, you shouldn't use motor oil for it. Oh, no, you have to use chain wax. Oh, no, you got to use kerosene to clean it. Like everybody's, everybody's got their own religion about chain maintenance. Um, you need to adjust your chain so it is a certain tightness. Um, usually, again, your owner's manual and or repair manual will walk you through this, but uh, usually it needs to be on the ground, on the side stand, which I don't see a difference between being on the rear stand and the side stand when I do this. Um, so I'm just gonna do it on the rear stand. Um, but it needs to be down um, with the weight supported on the tire and swing arm, and then you adjust your tightness so that your chain on the bottom here slides up and down a certain amount. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, I think it's 20 to 30 millimeters on the SV650. Um, I will look that up and post it down in the doobly-doo below. Uh, but uh, I also have uh, this Motion Pro tool here. This is fantastic for making sure that your chain is, uh, your tire is straight um, for your chain line. So it's just an easy screws on here to your, your sprocket. Um, and you got this um, rod that sticks out and uh, that way you can kind of stand behind it and look down your chain line and make sure that this rod, um, which is you know indexed to your sprocket, uh, is lined up with your chain line, so that way you're not you know cockeyed, uh, wearing down your teeth and destroying your chain, and, and your bike doesn't ride right because the back wheel isn't in line with the front wheel. Um, there's a number of ways to do this as well. Some people will set up a laser line. Some people will use uh, string um, and make sure that. It's the same distance from the very front of the bike to the very back or from the swing arm pivot to um, your axle. Um, there's, again, a number of ways to do this. Everybody's got their own preference. Um, this tool is pretty cheap. It's super useful. It's easy to store. It's small. I love it. Uh, I'll put a link down there in uh, uh, the link below as well. Uh, so let me tighten this bad boy up and we'll see what we got. If you don't have a torque wrench and you're going to work on vehicles, go buy one. Um, alternatively, most... Uh, of my life, I haven't really had a torque wrench and I've been working on vehicles, so, you know, again, do as I say, not as I do. Um, most things are a good <laughs> click um, when you do it, so give it a good <laughs> click. Um, you know, use use common sense. Um, as you work on things more and more frequently, you'll get a better feel for what size fastener should be roughly what torque spec. Um, use your common sense. Don't crank down an M6 fastener with a, you know, half inch drive uh anything uh, you'll snap it off so let's uh do this 47 foot pounds i'm gonna this back so it's tight i did that three times i think ideally you should only do it once it's gonna be roughly the same uh, now i'm looking at this and it looks like my hole lines up just almost perfectly for the cotter pin. So let's get that in there as well. Um, if you plan ahead a little bit better, <laughs> like I didn't this time, but I have in the past. Um, so my hole is right here. Um, you can pivot the axle um, before you torque this down. And it can be up, so then it goes upright. It doesn't really matter. I don't think what direction your, your um, uh, thing goes in. But uh, yeah, let's throw a cotter pin in there. Let's roll it around. I like it, man, that's tighter than I would prefer. Maybe if I hit the brakes a few times, it'll loosen up. Let's find out.
and girls. Phase one of project SV2 is essentially done. I got a couple of tweaks I gotta make. I think I need to adjust the throttle position sensor. It's got a little hiccup trying to accelerate off an idle uh, from zero throttle to, to you know more throttle input. I need to let it run a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of uh, smoke coming out of the exhaust. It's just like enough to mist up there as it runs. Um, I think it's just burning off stuff that's been in there from this thing not running for God knows how many years. Uh, yeah, man, we are, it, it has been a ride. I bought this thing last June. Turn off the key here so I don't kill my battery. Bateria. Uh, bought it last June. I had to take a little hiccup from working on it, um, as I had stated, because the apartment complex I lived in, uh, the lady decided that it wasn't okay for me to suddenly, suddenly wasn't okay for me to work on vehicles. Um, but uh, we got moved into this garage and we got some fast progress made. It was slow, but it was, it was all right. GSXR front end. Um, I got the fender I need to finish up yet and put on there, but that's, I'm not worried about that. Um, put on the carbon M4 exhaust. Uh, GSXR rear wheel. Looks mean. I need to take it out and get some glamour shots. That big beefy back wheel looks so much better. Looks like a real sport bike. Got a little 10 speed 160 that was on there. This is only a 180. Um, I say only. 180 is pretty standard for, for sport bikes, but just that little bit of difference makes a big difference in the way it looks. Um, I will, in my description down below, talk about the benefits uh, and you know, trade-offs of doing the GSX-R rear wheel swap. Um, there are you know, some things you have to take into account and some things that you need to decide whether or not you, you actually want to do it. But that's it, guys. Uh, hopefully this is helpful to somebody trying to do the GSX-R rear wheel swap. I will put the cards up for uh, the GSX-R fork swap um, walkthrough. I talked about the parts that I needed. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward just putting it on. Um, yeah, that's going to be it for now. Um, I got a, that brake disc, um, the brake caliper was dragging a bit, so I got to figure that out. Um, I'm going to troubleshoot that um, another day because I need to go home and get ready for work. But I'm going to edit this together, toss it up on YouTube so that uh, while everybody's quarantining, you can uh, you know, watch my you know, watch this and uh, see what the world see what's going on in the world of shitty custom bike building. That's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, keep your dick in a vice.